class, our professor turned to us and asked, what do you believe is funny? One girl raised her hand and said, well, I think my family is funny. And he said, okay, anything else? Another person raised their hand and said, well, I think that real life situations are funny. And he said, good, good, what else? One girl raised her hand, this white girl, and she said, well, I believe the truth is funny. And he said, yes, say more about that. And she said, well, you know, like the truth, like how, like how Asian people can't drive. Growing up, I had a really good friend named Danrel Reeve. Well, really, her name was Danielle Levy, but we went through this phase where we were switching all of our L sounds to R sounds so we could sound, you know, like Chinese. So she was known as Danrel Reeve, and she would call me Aria. One day after school in drama club class, uh, we were doing Hello Dolly, which we could have also called Hero Dari. <laughs> and um, it was like, what do you call those? Like dress rehearsals. So everyone was changing into their costume, getting ready to do this dress <laughs> round. And um, Hello Dolly, so that's like, like 1910s, early 20th century style clothing. So. Everyone was getting into these like long skirts, at least the girls were, not the boys. The girls were, you know, just the gender binary. The girls were getting into um, really long skirts that covered their knees and their legs, and these kind of like bonnet, like long shirts, frilly stuff. And everyone, it, it was high school, so everyone was changing out of their clothes, and you could see people's butts, and you could see like the outline of their boobs and stuff, and there was all this sexual tension. And I guess, Don Rell was like watching me change, and my older sister Naima, and my really good friend Kira. Um, so like the three only black girls. I guess she was watching us change because she came up to us and she was like, "Okay, guys, like get into a line," and we did because we're like friends. We're like, "Okay," and she was like, "And um, turn around." And then she shouted to like everyone in the drama club room, like, hey, everyone, look at Naima, Aliyah, and Kira. Hey, everyone, which one of their butts is the biggest? Sometime later, down street, 24th Street, uh, another black family moved in. Now, there was a biracial family on our street. There was a woman, not their name. She, I think the mother was biracial. Father may have been white. I don't quite remember him. I do remember her. And I don't remember their kids. I'll have to ask my brother if he remembers them. Anyway, so there were very few blacks on the street. So there was a black family who moved onto the street. Now they were Southern, and I definitely remember as a kid observing this girl, and I forgot her name, and their family, and definitely having an opinion about them. And the opinion was they were not on the same level, class-wise, as, as we were. They seemed to use that word ghetto, you know. What was spoken in their household in terms of language, I remember hearing like a lot of cursing in their household and looking at their house um, and the things that they had. It was uh, disparate, right? They didn't seem as educated, you know, and, and, I, and I think, what did I know? I didn't, but I was certainly measuring and judging 
what they had in comparison to what I had. I remember I invited this young lady into to, to come to my house to play or whatever. She tried to like beat me up in the house oh my God. one day. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't even remember what happened, like what I did. So she like like took swings at me and tried to beat me up. And I remember like yelling and screaming and grandma came out and was like, what's going on in here? And she never came back to the house again. One resident describes her horrifying experience when she first realized the complex was on fire. Well, I woke up to go give me a cold pop. And then I thought somebody was barbecuing. I said, oh Lord Jesus, it's a fire. <laughs> Then I ran out, I didn't grab no shoes or nothing, Jesus. I ran for my life. And then the smoke got me, I got bronchitis. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time, ain't nobody got time, ain't nobody got time for that. Terrifying moments for a woman who woke up to a strange man in bed with her. And Mark, the woman, the victim tells us that a man broke into her house and tried to rape her, her brother, went in and he tried to help her out, but the man got away, leaving behind, though, evidence of his visit. Dodson says her attacker used a garbage can to climb onto the unit's ledge, open the upstairs window, and then he got in bed with her. He, he tried to rape me. He tried to pull my clothes off. Dodson struggled with her attacker, knocking over items in her bedroom. Antoine Dodson heard his sister scream and ran to help. Well... Obviously, we have a rapist in Lincoln Park. He's climbing in your windows, he's snatching your people up, trying to rape them. So, y'all need to hide your kids, hide your wife, hide your kids, hide your wife, hide your kids, hide your wife, hide your kids, hide your wife. and hide your husband because they're raping everybody out here. You don't have to call and confess. We're looking for you. we go going to find you. we go going to find you. So, you can run and tell that, run and tell that. Dangerous out there. 